So uh, this 4-4 homework is in Google Classroom. So open it up and let's do some problems. So each one of these is either a sine or a cosine function that needs graphed. On the right side, you will see that not only do I want the graph, but I want the amplitude, period, frequency, phase shift, and vertical shift. Now, some of these are harder than others. Um, so I would like to look at some of the more difficult ones. So I think I want to do a sine and a cosine. So let's start um, with number three. Okay. So let's start with number three. So for problem number three, we have a cosine. Now, the parent cosine x and y is something you really want to get in your brain. Now, it all comes from the unit circle. If the five x's that we go, we go around the unit circle and we count by 90s. So 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. And if you follow the unit circle, the cosine starts at that x value of 1, then goes to 0 once it's at pi over 2, then negative 1, then 0, and then back to 1. Now that is the standard parent function for a cosine. So we're going to use those values to help us graph this new transformed function. Now let's think about what we know. This value, if there's a number out front, affects the amplitude. This value here on the x affects the period, which then affects the frequency. This whole thing affects the phase shift. And this number out here affects the vertical shift. So you kind of want to do the same thing every time. Now remember, the inside stuff is going to affect our x's. Any outside stuff is going to affect our y's. We'll follow order of operations. Okay, so what, where do we start? Well, you always start with the x's. We are going to set whatever's on the inside, whatever that is, to the original 5. So let's write that down. So we're going to set 2x plus pi equal to 0. 2x plus pi equal to the next one, pi over 2. 2x plus pi equal to the next one, which is pi. And so I, I don't have enough room for all five in a row, so I'll go over here. <clears throat> 2x plus pi equals 3 pi over 2. And 2x plus pi equals 2 pi. So all I did, where you want to start, is you want to take the inside stuff, set, set them equal to the five original x's, because we want this inside stuff to equal 0 pi over 2 pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. And that's going to give the x's that we will use on our chart. Now, so let's mathematically solve that. So what do we got to do? Well, we have to subtract a pi. We get 2x equals negative pi, and then divide by 2. So negative pi over 2. Now, that first one not only gives us uh, our starting value, negative pi over 2, on our um, x chart, x, y chart, but it also gives us our phase shift. So negative pi over 2. So what that means is, is we have gone left of pi over 2. Okay. But now we need to do that for all of the others. Okay. Now they're equally spaced, so once you see the pattern, feel free to, you know, do the pattern, but let's keep going. So here if I subtract a pi from a half of a pi, I have a negative half pi, and then divide by 2, I get a fourth of a pi. Okay, so the next one is negative pi over 4. And then here I subtract a pi, I get 2x equals 0, so x is 0. That's our third one. Let's do our fourth one. Now let's think. I, I think of pizza pies. You know, it's it sounds kind of silly, but it, it will help. You know, the, you, the fractions become a little clear. If I have three halves or one and a half pizza pies, okay. So let's draw three halves pizza pies. I have three halves. If I take away 
a whole, I still have a half. You know, so three halves take away one, leaves me with a half. So, I mean, just think of half a pi, okay? And so then when you divide by two, you get pi over four. So our next one is pi over four. And then our last one, you might already see the pattern, but we're going to subtract the pi from both sides and then divide by 2. So we're counting by pi over 4's. That is our largest denominator. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to count 1, 2, 3, 4, and on the fourth one that's where we put a pi. And if we had enough that we could put another one, 4 more would be 2 pi. And then go to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4, and on the fourth one put negative pi. <laughs> Now we have our x's, now let's talk about the y's. If I plug those in, this part is going to give me the y's you see here. 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1, unless there is something sitting here or here. Well, there isn't. So, well, I'm sorry, there isn't something right here, but there is something here. We're going to have to, to subtract 1 from each of those following order of operations. So we're going to get 1 minus 1. 0 minus 1, negative 1 minus 1, 0 minus 1, and 1 minus 1. So then you just do the math. Okay. Uh, did I do something wrong in there? Yeah, just a second. We're subtracting 1, that top 1. Let's make sure. I did. I put 1 minus 0. I'm sorry. That's 1 minus 1. So if you thought I'd lost it, I could come have a little bit. Okay. Now, let's answer the questions we see here. The amplitude is based upon the number you see here. When you don't see it, there's no change in the amplitude. It's always 1. Or that front coefficient is 1. The period. To solve for the period, we're just going to take the, the thing that's stuck to the x, the x term, and you set it equal to 2 pi when doing sines and cosines, and you solve for x. So we're going to get x equals pi. The frequency and period go together. You just take the reciprocal of whatever you get for a period, and then you get the frequency. So that's 1 over pi. And the only thing we are left with now is the vertical shift, which is this number right here. And write it as its midline, y equals negative. Now we're ready to graph. The first thing you should always put on your uh, graph paper before we go and put those points on is our vertical shift or midline. We have a midline of negative 1. So I want you to get in the habit, before we draw those points, put a dashed line wherever the midline is. Now, if there's no number out here, your midline is at 0. But if there is a number out here, it's exactly that number where you're going to put a vertical line, I mean a horizontal line. Now it's time to actually physically graph our points. So, um, at negative one half, we are at zero, negative half a pi. At a negative one fourth, we're down on the midline at negative one. At zero, we're down at negative two. At uh, pi over four, we are at uh, negative one again. And at pi over 2, we're back on 0. And so our graph, make them rounded, looks like that. A sine will always kind of look like a bell in a way. I mean, a cosine will always look like a bell. Now, I want you to get in the habit to stretch this out across your graph paper. So the wave has to come back down, go back up. You know, you're going to follow the wave pattern to the right. We're going to follow the wave pattern to the left. Fill up your graph paper every time. So we're going to be on the midline, down, back on the midline, up. And we can go back down. That fills our graph paper to the right. Now let's fill our graph paper to the left. Down, down, 
itself. Oh. So there is our answer to number three. And I expect to see all of that work every time. Now let's take a look at number six. So the first one we did was a cosine. This one is a sine. So the first step that I always take is to take and I write down somewhere the original. The original uh, five points for a sine goes zero, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, and two pi. And the original sine y values zero, one, zero, negative one, zero. Think about that chart, chart we built. Okay. So, um, next thing we're going to do after we write down what the original is for, for reference, let's take whatever's inside our parentheses and we're going to set it equal to the five originals. So we're going to set 2x minus pi over 2 equal to 0, 2x minus pi over 2 equal to pi over 2, 2x minus pi over 2 equal to pi, 2x minus pi over 2 equals 3 pi over 2, and 2x minus pi over 2 is equal to 2 pi. Now, we're going to solve each one. The first one not only is important for the first x on our chart, but it also, remember, gives us our uh, shift, our phase shift. So let's go ahead and solve that. We're going to add pi over 2. We're going to get 2x equals pi over 2. When we divide both sides by 2, we get x equals pi over 4. So that's our first new x. Now let's write that over on our phase shift line. So that means that we're going to move to the right of pi over 4. So our sine graph normally starts at 0 and goes up and then back down. And so um, we definitely know we've moved to the right of pi over 4. Let's do the next one. If I add a pi over 2 to a, another pi over 2, I get a whole pi. Divide that by 2, I get pi over 2. Now, if you are good with fractions, you might notice that we are counting by quarter pies. And so if you know what the next one is, do it. But if you don't, let's keep going. Let's add a pi over 2 to a pi. That's going to be a 3 pi over 2. Divide by 2, we get 3 pi over 4. Let's add a pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2. We get 4 pi over 2, which is 2 pi. Divide that by 2, get a pi. And our last one, if we add a pi over 2, that's 4 pi over 2 plus 1 pi over 2. It's 5 pi over 2. Divided by 2 is 5 pi over 4. So we know that on our graph paper, we need to count by pi over 4. So that is our largest denominator and the common denominator for all of those fractions. So count, 1, 2, 3, 4, put your pi. 1, 2, 3, 4, we can count to 2 pi. 1, 2, 3, 4, count to negative pi, and we don't have enough room to go to negative 2 pi. Okay? So that's how we find our x's. Now let's find our y's. Okay? Our y's are affected by these two things. They will be the normal things from the chart. That's why you want to have this memorized. Times 3 plus 2. So what I do is I just write 3 times 0 plus 2. See, I just took this value, showed the order of operations. I'm going to multiply by 3 and add 2. So the next one will be 3 times 1 plus 2. The third one's going to be 3 times 0 plus 2. The last one's, or fourth one, I'm sorry, is going to be 3 times negative 1 plus 2. And the last one is going to be 3 times 0 plus 2. 
you see that right here is where the sine is sitting. That's where our original five sine values go. Now let's actually do that. Three plus two is, or I mean, I'm sorry, three times zero is zero plus two is two. Three plus two is five. Zero plus two is two. Negative three plus two is negative one. Zero plus two is two. Now, um, whatever our change is right here, let's do that next. That is our vertical shift. Write it as y equals. And uh, put on your graph paper next the horizontal line at 2. Okay. Now, before we actually plot these points, ready to go, let's finish off the amplitude period frequency. The amplitude is the absolute value of the number you see here. The absolute value of 3 is just 3. That means from the middle of our wave up, we go to a height of 3 above the middle line, and we go 3 below the middle line. Next, let's do the period. The period, um, you're going to take this, whatever the x is, set it equal to 2 pi, always for sine and cosine equal to 2 pi, solve for x. So the frequency is just 1 over that. We filled in all of our lines, so now we are ready to graph the points that you see here. Okay. So um, at pi over 4, which is our very first fourth of a pi right here, we are at 2. At uh, pi over 2, which is halfway, halfway to pi, uh, or 2 fourths, uh, we're up at 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. At 3 fourths, we are at 2. So if you want to draw that first bump, you can. And now let's do the final bump, the bottom bump. Um, so at pi, we are at negative 1. And finally at 5 fourths, which is right here, we are at 2. So that's one period of our sine function. Now, you always want to do a minimum of two periods of the graph, two waves of the graph, two cycles of the graph. But in this particular case, I want you to fill up your graph paper. So the next thing to the right would be to go up three, back to the center, down three, the center. I have to try to fill in a wave if I can. Now let's keep going, our, fill up our graph paper to the left. So we're going to go down three from the center, up, that's a bump, and then up three, and then down. Same width for going to the left and going to the right. My graph paper is a little off. And then down three, and then up three. And then I guess we'll stop there, okay? So there is problem number six. I hope this helped you with uh, the patterns and the, the ways to graph a sine and a cosine. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Have a good day. Bye.